Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here and welcome to some more Magic Arena gameplay. Today we're going to be doing something different. Since I figured people were getting tired of seeing the same old blue-white with a twist, I convinced myself to sell some stuff in Paper Magic so that I could open some more packs so that we can play some other things. And this is what we're going to be running. This is Red Green Monsters. It's based on a deck list that was published by Reed Duke just a few days ago. It is card for card his main deck except for two exceptions, but we'll get into that as we go through the cards. The basis of this deck is to kind of ramp, uh, hit our land drops, smooth our draws with our green explore creatures, and then win the game with our gigantic red flyers. So what are we running? Well, first of all, we're running four Llanowar Elves. An awesome inclusion in this archetype from Dominaria allows us to play Llanowar on turn 1 and then on turn 2 play one of our 3 drops. Uh, also just lets us play everything from 3 drops up a turn early. We're running 2 Magma Spray as efficient removal as well as exiling for recurrent threats. We are running 4 Earthshaker Kenra because it's just really good. 2-1 Haste for 2. When it enters the battlefield, you can stop something from blocking and then can eternalize as a 4-4 and do it all again. For Merfolk Branch Walker, again, Explore helps smooth out our draws, lets us hit our land drops on time, as well as letting us place cards in the graveyard that we don't want to actually draw. We're playing a 1-of Resilient Kenra because the green Kenra is just not as good as the red Kenra. For 1 and a green, we have a 2-2. Two, two. When Resilient Kenra enters the battlefield, you may have target creature get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is Resilient Kenra's power, and it also eternalizes for 4 and 2 green. When you eternalize something, no matter what size it was before, it comes back as a 4-4, four, four, so that's always good to know. So on the rebound, we'll get to give something plus 4 plus 4. So the first change to the deck is we've cut down from four of braids to three, and that's to make room for a couple of other cards that are meant to combat the arena metagame. A braids just really efficient removal as well as versatile, uh, lets us kill smaller creatures as well as destroying artifacts, most notably God Pharaoh's Gift. Then in our three drop slot, we have a singleton Ronus the Indomitable. Works very well in the deck. We can turn it on even without him having to pump other things as a lot of our higher end creatures are big enough to just let him attack and block as is. But he gives us a little bit more reach by pumping other creatures as well as being a threat that's somewhat difficult to remove unless you have the right removal for him. The second of our explore creatures is also a playset, Jade Light Ranger. For 1 and 2 green, we have a 2-1 that explores twice, which is a whole lot better than exploring once. Then we get into our upper range, into our creatures that are meant to win us the game. 3 Rekindling Phoenix, another threat that's very difficult for the opponent to deal with unless they have the appropriate responses, such as exiling it. Otherwise, it's going to cost them at least 2 cards to deal with as they have to kill the Phoenix and then kill the 0-1 red elemental creature that it makes so that it doesn't recur. Also important to remember that we can kill our own Phoenix with something like a Braid. If opponent is trying to exile it, we can kill it ourselves so that we get the trigger for the elemental. Another card from Dominaria that we're trying out is Varric's Bladewing. We're running three of these as well. For four mana, we have a 4-4 Legendary Dragon with Flying. Kicker of three, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create another Legendary 4-4 Red Dragon creature with Flying. I'm interested to see how exactly Varric does. I've played a few games with this deck already, but I have yet to draw a Varric, so hopefully we can do that in this episode. The other change is the original deck list had a Chandra Torch of Defiance. We don't have access to that in Magic Arena, that is from Kaladesh Block, so we are also replacing that, and the cards we're replacing both the Abrade and Chandra with are a pair of Struggle to Survive. This is an acknowledgement of both Scarab God and Lyra Dawnbringer, uh, otherwise the deck has a very hard time dealing with those cards, so Struggle is two and a red, instant deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control, and the aftermath of the card is survive, one and a green, each player shuffles their graveyard into their library. The survive part helps us to get rid of Scarab God, kill it, shuffle it away. I mean, they could just draw it the next turn, but at least it gives us a chance to get past that. And then at the very top of our curve is a playset of Glorybringer. 
who is just awesome. Three and two red for a four four flying dragon with haste. When we attack, we can exert it, and if we do, it deals four damage to target non-dragon creature an opponent controls. That is the business into the deck. Let's take a look at the mana base. We are running eight mountains, seven forests, to Hoshep Oasis to give us a little bit of reach in the mid to late game. We can sacrifice it to give a creature plus three, plus three until end of turn. Unfortunately, can only be used as a sorcery, so we need to be aware of that. We can't just attack and then pop Hoshep Oasis after opponent blocks. And then rounding out the mana base is a playset each of Rootbound Crag and Sheltered Thicket. That is the deck list. Let's jam a few games. All right, this is unfortunate. If we had a green source in hand, this would be a definite keep. As it is, I don't think we can. Let's ship it back. Also unfortunate that our opponent's going first, and our mulligan didn't give us a green mana either. Uh, I don't think we can pitch this one. I think we're going to keep it in scry, hoping to hit a green source. Now, this is not great for us. If we can hit a green source, especially... Ah, uh, there we go. Especially a comes into play untapped one, then I think we're okay. So that helps a lot. We'll lead off with the mountain. Looks like opponent is stuck on one land. That's not good for them. Also not really good for the video, since it's not a great amount of gameplay. I think we're going to keep that. We're going to be able to cast it on curve, even without kicker. I think that's fine. Well, there's a second land for our opponent. That's good. All right, going to ramp. Looks like we got ramp dinosaurs here. Excellent. Let's go for our second branch walker. A uh, jade light ranger. I think we're going to keep that as well. Just try to out aggro our opponent before they can actually get their game plan going here. Another migration, sure. Three color Jund over there. Well, let's play out a blade wing. We can't kick, so we won't try to. Hit for six. And unless the, the opponent has something really good here, I don't think they can come back from getting mana screwed as they did. There's the Raptor. Would have loved to have drawn a fifth land there. We did not, however. Oh, and actually, I'm a silly, silly person. We don't have a second green for Jade Light. I should have milled that. Oh, well. Uh, let's attack with Varix. And then we will play out Ronus. So something that would make our life hard here is if the opponent has a fight spell, such as Savage Stomp or something of the sort, that they can kill our dragon, draw a card. We could still play our other dragon, or if we top deck a Netherland, the Glorybringer. Uh, we didn't do that. Let's go to combat. And we're going to swing with everything. All right, Magma Spray. Blockers. Moment of craving. Okay, so they're going to survive this turn, but they're going to lose their Ripjaw Raptor. However, it's going to replace itself with a card. That is, unless they have a pump spell to save it here. All right, card draw. Go ahead. And end combat. Thank you for saying that instead of end turn. I hope that is a permanent change. Lay out our phoenix. See if the opponent has what they need to deal with these three massive threats. Apparently not. So despite our little Jade Light Ranger misplay, we got there. Alright, this is an excellent hand. I wish we could get the play instead of the draw, but we will take what we're offered. If our elf lives, then we can land a war into turn two Jade Light. Hopefully that will net us some card advantage. Ooh, land a war elves from our opponent. Hello, brother. Have you come to play? All 
Uh-huh. Okay, not quite a mirror. Looks like they are on dinosaurs, just with uh, elves as a ramp card. So let's go for Jade Light here. Uh, we will... Hmm. That's hard. We could put it into the graveyard as a pseudo card draw because we can eternalize it. But I would also like to cast it next turn. Um... No, I think it's right to mill it. We'll graveyard it. And another one. We will keep that one. All right, Hunt Master. No attacks. Well, we will go. I guess we want a second red source out there. Um, let's go Earthshaker Kenra. We'll say the Raptors can't block. And we'll go to combat and swing with our non-elf. Well, she's an elf. Or no, she's a merfolk. Never mind. With our non-elf creatures. I was right the first time. Alrighty. Now we'll branch walker. And we will keep Varix. Ooh, Naya colors, eh? Got white in there too. And the reason I made Earthshaker Kenra make Ranging Raptors unable to block is, well, first of all, it can kill Earthshaker Kenra and not die. But the other thing is, when it takes damage, they get to ramp. So we want to avoid that if possible. Opponent choosing not to attack this turn. That's probably for the best for them. So the question is, do we struggle this Ranging Raptors so that we can swing with everything but the Elf? Probably better just to play out Varix, right? Let's go to combat. And we'll attack with our things that can trade with ranging raptors. All right. You just going to chump or are you going to trade two for one here? All right. I'm quite happy with that block. Hopefully you don't have a combat trick. Uh yeah, we'll kill the hunt master. Uh actually, let's just not trade two for one. Let's kill your Lenawar Elves. That way we kind of blow you out, keep our merfolk. Right, that worked out fairly well for us. Not going to be able to play Varix this turn, but I think that's fine. We can eternalize Earthshaker Kinra next turn if our elf lives. Fiery Cannonade. Okay, well, opponent got us there. So no eternalizing Earthshaker Kinra for us. Got us to use our struggle when we didn't actually need to. Uh, Glorybringer, Varix. I suppose we'll go with Glorybringer. Hopefully they don't have a fight card in hand. We are not going to exert, as all that would do is draw them a card and not actually kill the Ripjaw Raptor. Taken four. So if we stay in this state, we win this race, but that's not guaranteed. Second Ripjaw Raptor, okay. Untapped land off the top, please. That's not what that is. I think it's okay, though. Uh, let's attack. Then we will Elf plus other dragon and we cannot kick it
All right, we will not block. All right, didn't get our sixth land. Oh, well, never mind. Opponent concedes as we're trying to figure out how best to make this attack. All right, this hand is unfortunately a little slow. We're on the draw again. Um, of course, we can take a pain and just put Lana War Elves into play, but then Rootbound Crag's going to come into play tapped the next turn. Uh, I do think we keep this. Hopefully, we will draw... An untapped red source. There we go. Okay, that makes this a whole lot better. Go ahead and go with our elves. Alright. Swamp for the opponent there. Black green. So this could be black green explore. There's a treasure map. Okay. So we go mountain. Kinra and make itself unable to block. We'll play our other Land of War Elf and then attack for two. All right, scry on upkeep. Opponent looking for something. All right, hit their land drop there. Seeker Squire, they are explore, it looks like. And they got another swamp, okay. So, I do think that we're going to attack with the Earthshaker Kenra. Question is, do we play Ronus or Rekindling Phoenix here? I think it's probably Ronus, that way Rekindling Phoenix will turn on Ronus the next turn. So, let's go to attack. We'll attack with our Kinra. Yep, that's fine. We're one mana off eternalizing if our elves live. We'll play out actually... Yeah, we can't cast Struggle any anyway, so we'll play out Ronus. Doesn't really matter how we're tapped since we can't cast it. Opponent chose not to scry on upkeep that time. There's the swamp that we knew about. Golden Demise, all right. Well, that is unfortunate. Now we need to top deck an untapped mana source. I think if we do, though, that we're in good shape. Well, that's not exactly an untapped mana source, but we will certainly take it. Don't want to cycle that thing. Vizier of the Menagerie, okay. Make their land drop. Uh, we will go to their instep and we're going to kill that thing. We'll just do it now since they're tapped out. Yep, flip their treasure map there. All right, so now we want a fifth untapped land. Let's go with Rekindling Phoenix for now. And then bash in for five. Hello, Tetsamonk. There's a Seeker Squire. Do you have a kill spell for the Phoenix, I wonder? Or for the Elemental? Which you're at exactly enough mana to cast Tetsamok, but not deal with the Elemental token this turn. Okay, gonna draw a card, sure. So our best case scenario is untapped land, which if they don't have removal, lets us kill them this turn. And we got the land, so let's see if we actually get to kill them this turn. Right. 
we will attack. We want Glorybringer to exert to clear the blockers. This is exactly 13 showing. Moment of Craving will also save them by gaining them some life and reducing power. Okay, looks like they didn't have it. All right, we are on the draw again. We only have one green source. This is a slow hand. I think we have to mulligan this. I mean, that's a little better, I suppose. We'll keep it. Variks. We probably do want Variks. All right. No idea what our opponent's on. I would very much like to have the play one of these games. Correction. I would like to have the play and have a decent hand at the same time. So we can Earthshaker next turn. Looks like they are on blue-white, though. So this may be a very difficult matchup, especially with the suboptimal hand that we've gotten. See if we can get in there. I kind of expect this to get countered or sealed away. There's a Syncopate, which is actually worse for us since uh, it exiles it and now we can't eternalize it. Uh, I've tried Syncopate in some of the more controlling builds of Blue-White that I've been trying lately. I don't like Syncopate in it because if you're playing Settle the Wreckage, you give your opponent a ton of lands. And that doesn't work out very well for you in the late game, which these decks tend to run to. Another Varix. We've got one already. Uh, let's graveyard it. And we will keep that one. Might have been right to keep the blade wing there. If we play this and then they deal with it, that would have us a backup 4-4 flying dragon. Well, let's see if we can get in for some damage. Looks like our opponent's stuck on two. I was too busy looking at my own cards and contemplating what to do to realize they didn't make a land drop that turn. Blink of an eye? Sure. I will take another two explorers. Uh, yeah, make sure we're not in combat there. Jade Light Ranger, please. Uh, graveyard. And a land. Awesome. Uh, we'll go... Hmm. Guess we'll go with the forest and play out Llanowar Elves. Opponent digging for land here, it looks like. And they did not find it. That is very bad for the opponent. Let's attack. First damage we've dealt, even with them stuck on two lands. So we've got five, six, seven. We could kick this, but I think that's greedy to try to do. So let's just play it out. Then we will play the forest, and we're planning on cycling this sheltered thicket at some point. All right, I will be very surprised if at this point they don't have a seal away. Let's go to combat. We're going to attack with everything. Yep, there's a seal away. We kind of expected that. If they didn't have that, they were in really bad shape here. Damages. And now let's go with more exploration, shall we? We want to discover all the cards. That will do. Branch Walker as well. Uh, yes. Please and thank you. I will take a Glory Bringer. We'll play out our Oasis. Well, opponent finally hit their third land drop. I don't think that's going to be enough for them, though. Let's play Glory Bringer. Hornswoggle. Okay, that's interesting. Got themselves a treasure, so now they actually have the mana to settle the wreckage next turn. No matter what, we're going to attack with everything. 
down to three. We're gonna pass. We'll plan on cycling this sheltered thicket. Right, Desert of the Mindful. So now we have to be aware of Settle the Wreckage. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and cycle. Well, branch walker's fine. So we're going to go to combat. And we're going to attack with our two three power creatures. As they're both lethal. That way we don't get our whole board settled. And if they only have one removal spell, then we still kill them. Yep, yeah, there's the settle. I will take that. Guess we'll get a couple of mountains. Then we will go Branch Walker. Hmm. Hopefully this game is not just slipping away from us here. Uh, I guess we'll cast Glorybringer too, so that we don't get it counterspelled potentially. Right, Gideon. I don't think Gideon's going to get the job done. The gods of this world are worthy of service. And opponent agrees. We get to go first, really? Uh, but we don't get to cast Lana War Elves on turn one. I still think we get to keep this. Yep, let's keep it. One thing about this red-green deck is the games certainly go a ton faster than they do with any of the iterations of blue-white that I've tested. Uh, we go with Earthshaker. And proceed to shake the Earth. Alright, showing mono-black from the opponent so far. Hmm. I think we go second Earthshaker. That's so that we can have the green up for Atlanta War Elves. Otherwise, the green Kinra would have been a consideration there. You have a moment of craving? No? Yes? Maybe? Yes, you do. Okay. Come on, Elfie. Join the party. Evolving wild, so they've almost certainly got a second color then. Otherwise, I don't know why you would play evolving wild. Let's go to combat. Alright, cast down. At least it doesn't gain you any life, nor does it exile our Kinra. Get in there for one. And let Phoenix come out to party. Going to be very sad if they have another land drop plus Vraska's Contempt, but there's not a lot that we can do to stop that, so. We are also just one more untapped land from starting to eternalize these Earthshaker Kinras, so they're black blue. There's a Vizier of Many Faces. Alright, so I think we just eternalize Earthshaker Kinra. And you can't block. And take eight damage, please. Right there, Scarab God. But I think they're just dead. No, they aren't. If we had one more untapped mana, they would be dead. Hmm. Three... So we can make this unable to block. Hmm. I think we do want to kill that Scarab God. So let's go to combat. I'm going to swing with these. Right, opponent trying to decide whether or not to block with Scarab God, and they are choosing not. Alright. Yep. Alright, 
point, we both get elementals. They can reanimate our phoenix next turn. Or our Earthshaker Kenra. They can't get both. And combat, please. I think we're going to go with Ronus. And I want to leave this red up. We'll play Resilient Kenra 2. And maybe I should have played the Kenra pre-combat. Doesn't really matter what we target in the turn. Yep, they are getting our Phoenix. We can make said Phoenix unable to block, though. Yep, you got it. So we lose a life, they get to scry one. Yeah, in hindsight, I think maybe I should have Resilient Kindred onto our Phoenix before the attack. That way they couldn't have traded their Vizier for our Phoenix. I think we're still going to get this game. But definitely could have played that last turn better. On that, I do not expect them to attack, and they don't. Uh, we are going to Magma Spray this Elemental. Get rid of that blocker. Then we will eternalize Earthshaker Kenra. You can't block. All but the elemental attack. Alright, once again, our play mistake did not cost us the game, happily. Except for the lack of red mana, this is a decent hand. We are on the draw again. I think we have to mulligan. Yeah, that's that's a bit better. I suppose we'll keep it. And I guess we do want another land. So that we can for sure cast Rekindling Phoenixes. Island Siren Storm Tamer from the opponent. Okay. Go Sheltered Thicket. So this is probably an Aura's deck where they... Stack a bunch of stuff on their creatures, like one or two big creatures, and then try to kill us with them. Also, Storm Tamer can sacrifice to counter abilities. Ooh, Dauntless Bodyguard is a good addition, so you are protecting... Which... Which one are you protecting? That one, okay. Hmm. This may be a game that we are not going to be able to win. So if Elf survives, then maybe Phoenix can help us out with that. Luckily, the Phoenix is not legendary, so we can have both in play. Yep, there's a Cartouche. Going to be taking five here. I wouldn't have blocked the Dauntless Bodyguard anyway, because I want to be able to cast my Phoenix this next turn. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Hopefully, opponent does not have bounce spells. If they do, we're probably just going to get tempoed into the ground. Okay, another cartouche. It is a big dauntless bodyguard. No bounce spell, please. Right, then it's not a bounce spell. Good. It's almost big enough to swing and get through the Rekindling Phoenix, though. Which I'm guessing is what they're trying to do. Or not. Um, we'll try to trade with you. Oh, your first strike, aren't you? Well, either way, it's fine. Again, as long as they don't have an unsummon for our elemental here. I forgot that the White Cartouche gives first strike. Good to remember. Alrighty, so... Definitely think we play out Elf. And second Phoenix. So now the question is if we attack for four or try to hold both of these back to double block this. The problem with that is... If they have more to buff this, in which case it's better to just swing. Hmm. 
I think we're going to risk blocking this turn. We'll, we'll pass. Would love to draw a struggle here. Kill that Dauntless Bodyguard. I actually think they may have made a mistake putting all that stuff on the Bodyguard instead of on the Siren that it's protecting. So we can't double block and get ya. We've got enough first striking power to kill both of ours. So we'll just do that. So I should have attacked with the Phoenix. Unfortunately, hindsight is always better than foresight. No bounce spell, please. I want my Phoenix to come back. At least this sucker doesn't have lifelink, so their life total isn't getting ridiculously out of hand here. Legion's Landing, that is a problem too. Feel like we're just getting buried this game. Welcome back, Phoenix friend. Struggle, please. It's not exactly what that is, but Glorybringer is not a horrible draw here. So, I think we're going to cast it. And I don't know why they scooped to the Glorybringer. That was definitely not game. They, we were still in a very bad situation there. Oh, well, sure, we'll take a win. Uh... Great hand. Unfortunately, we're on the draw yet again, but we are definitely going to keep this. Very happy with this hand. Lana War Elves from the opponent, too. I will see your Lana War Elves. Not a mirror, though. Green, white. No blocks. We'll go root bound into Branch Walker. Sure. Let's get in for one. Just trade damage back and forth here. All right, opponent chooses not to attack that time. Uh, I am going to attack with our Branch Walker. They want to sacrifice their elf to kill our merfolk. That'll be fine. Okay, sure. There's some sapperlings. Guess you're sacrificing a sapperling. Um. So, crag into phoenix. Then next turn, if our elf lives, glory bringer, and if it doesn't, Varix blade wing. There's Lyra. That is one of the problems we were talking about that Struggle to Survive is in the deck to try to help us with. Unfortunately, we don't have it. So, maybe we don't Glory Bringer this turn. Perhaps we Jade Light Ranger. Um. Think we gotta pitch it? Yep, just digging, just digging for a struggle to survive. So three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, we're gonna hold these sheltered thickets to cycle, and pass the turn. We should be able to kick a blade wing, if we live long enough. However, we also really want to draw a struggle to survive, so that we can kill this Lyra. Or, I guess, kill Shalai, since Lyra is getting hexproof here. Yep. No blocks. Let's go ahead and cycle this so we don't have to keep responding. Yeah, this is a pretty good combo against us.
Hmm. And unfortunately, we can't even attack. Even with Glorybringer, we would need one more damage to kill Shalai. So, I think we're going to go for another Ranger. Still just digging for struggle. Uh, graveyard. That is not what that is. End turn. Actually, perhaps I should have blocked with Phoenix last turn since they were completely tapped out. We would have for sure got to get our Phoenix back while not taking that 5 damage. Yeah, I think we block. With green-white, if they have the stuff to kill it, then uh, they're probably going to be able to kill it whether we block or not. They'll just exile it with an enchantment. Um, cycle, please. Yep, give me one of these phoenixes back. Alrighty. So we can kick a blade wing. I just don't think it's going to matter this game. And in the turn. At least maybe we now have a chance to hold Lyra at bay. Unless they have a removal spell. There's a Karn. I don't really see us winning this game. Um, you can have the Sapperling migration. Do not want you to have Song of Freilies. Alright, so tapped out. So we're not going to get attacked this turn. Actually, I would like for us to get attacked. We triple block and kill that Lyra. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. Alright, well... At this point, we might as well just put everything we've got on the board. You know, you can't block. Glory bringer. And in the turn. If we had even a magma spray, we could kill this thing. Or could have killed this thing that last turn. Now they've got all their mana online, though, with Shalai's activated ability. They had a Song of Freyle, or they got the Song of Freyle's with Karn there. So, yeah, we're going to lose this. I don't see any way that we're getting out of it. Yep, another migration. Let's get that graphical glitch off of there. Or so are Thalid. All right, I guess we'll dig one more time. Guess the second glory bringer would do it for us right now too. Uh, graveyard. All righty, my friend. Yep, you've got tons and tons of mana. Which means you can activate Shalai like three times? Something like that? I'll make use of that later. Uh, you can have the planes, I suppose. I hate it when it switches sides like that. It shows you in, in one configuration, then when you actually have to choose, it switches. The first couple of times I clicked too fast and gave the wrong card. So I expect them to go absolutely bonkers with counters here. And I don't really know if I can survive an attack when Song of Freilies pops next turn. Graveyard. Library. Not that it's going to matter, it's taken way too long. Um, sure. Let's eternalize you. Um pluses here. I'm not I'm not attacking either which way. I could sit here and do the math. Sure. Buff it. Uh I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. Or pretty close. We're going to lose most, if not all, of our entire board trying to survive if this is not just straight out lethal. 
Yep. And again. Yep. And you got one more in you? Nope. But Song of Frailies does. Those are some really big saplings over there, if you didn't know, folks. And they have got our names on them. Um, you can have your other legendary. Just attack, friend. I won't block. This game's over. All you gotta do is attack. Yep. You, you don't really need to do anything else, I promise. All your stuff is vigilant, trample, and indestructible. Alright, well, you had your chance. I'm conceding. And that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below. It really does help tremendously. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.